Keep yourself in the loop of everything football on the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. The latest news on and off the field, be it college football, Big Ten, SCC, Big 12, Pac-12, ACC, to the NFL. We've got you covered. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. To the GSMC Football Podcast. This episode is brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. And as always, I'm your host, Jesse Tapia. And for today's show, we're going to be starting off, we're going to be starting off talking about each of the four remaining playoff teams, talk about pretty much their seasons, talk about um, talk. We're going to talk about their strengths, what helped get them here, and pretty much, like I said, just recap their way up to now, okay? We're going to be talking about that. Second segment, we're going to be talking about how the era of the QB, the era of you needed a solid QB, a great QB to become successful, is starting to die, okay? We're going to talk about how they're really, like, we're going to talk about the current era of QBs that are starting to, about to retire, talk about the new era of QBs, and talk about pretty much, like I said, just why the whole... You need a QB to become successful. Little type of what do you what would you call that phrase? No, you wouldn't call that a phrase. Idea, I guess. Yeah, that whole you need a QB to succeed idea is starting to go down. All right, so we'll talk about that. Then we're gonna do the complete opposite of segment one and segment three. We're gonna talk about each team's weaknesses. All right, we're gonna talk primarily about um, the games, I guess you could say. But we could talk about, we might talk about like weaknesses like the Jacksonville Jaguars doing the Patriots League weaknesses against each other. We'll talk about Minnesota Philly. We could talk about like Jacksonville versus Minnesota because that's a possibility of the Super Bowl. We'll do all that kinds of good stuff, all right? And then for the, for the um, last segment, that's pretty much just going to be whatever comes to my mind. All right, we're, we could talk about best divisions in football this year. We could talk about uh, teams who... We're really good this season, but might be going down next season. Or we can just pretty much, like I said, it's just pretty much whatever whatever comes to my mind. All right, that's why I like doing the fourth segment because, I mean, we could talk about anything. We could talk about, like we did last week, we talked about uh, top five players at each position, position. So we'll do all that. But let's currently talk about the, let's talk about the teams currently in playoffs. It's all about them, all right? They're still in the playoffs. They're still playing. We need, that's why I'm doing this the first segment because it's about them. All right, so which team should we start? Let's start off with the New England Patriots, okay? How did they get here? They finished the season 13-3. and All right, remember they had that big blowout loss to the Chiefs week one, 42-27. Then they go on a nice little two-game winning streak against the Saints and Texans, lose to the Panthers 33-30. Then they just, boom, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, go on an eight-game winning streak. That streak ends. Because they lose to the Miami Dolphins Monday night. That was the Jay Cutler game right there. Probably Jay Cutler's best game as a Dolphin right there. And Patriots just didn't look good. Next week, they have the Steelers. Steelers, they beat them. Remember, that was the Jesse James controversy. Was it a catch? Was it not a catch? I say it was a catch. But the refs say it wasn't. So that's what matters. All right. So the Patriots won that one. Then they won their final two games against the Bills and Jets. And now here we are. All right, they blew up the Titans 35-14, and now they have a matchup with the Jaguars. What worked well for the Patriots this season? The, what worked well is uh, Deion Lewis. All right, remember the first three games of the season, I think it was, Mike Gillisley looked like he was going to be the guy. He was scoring touchdowns. What I noticed about him, though, he wasn't um, getting too many yards. All right, he was scoring goal line touchdowns, but wasn't getting too many yards. Like a Trent Richardson type, all right? Remember that first season he had with Cleveland? Trent Richardson wasn't running for a bunch of yards. Okay, he was scoring a bunch of touchdowns, but those were all goal line touchdowns. Sure enough, Trent Richardson now playing in the Canadian Football League, I think, or at least trying to. At least, at least I think that's where he is, all right? So Tom Brady finished the year with 4,577 yards, and then Deion Lewis really didn't get going, really didn't um, get much of an opportunity till the middle part of the season, all right? He finished with 180 carries. 
had 800 and 896 yards. Let me see if I could do some quick math to see how many yards per carry that is. All right. If you haven't noticed over the course of the time I've done this show, I'm not much of a math person. All right. So that's about five yards of carry right there. It's about 4.9. So I'm going to call that five yards of carry. I didn't do that in my head. I pulled out my fancy schmancy calculator to do that. All right. So Deion Lewis, like I said, that's one of the New England strikes so far this season. All right. Deion Lewis played well. Okay. I remember, like I said, beginning of the season or middle of the season, he was on um, the bench for my um, in my fantasy. Like I picked him up, and I was noticing how week after week, okay, he didn't like just start off. It was like a week after week type of thing where he'd start first week he had like 50 yards, next week he'd go around 65, and then just keep improving year uh, week after week. Like I said, and then eventually he was around 100 yard rusher a game. And the biggest thing with Deion Lewis too is the fact that he's also a good pass catching back. Okay. He's not just a one-dimensional type of back, right? He's like a Le'Veon Bell, Todd Gurley type. Not as good as them. I'm not saying that, okay? Don't run away and tell everyone that Jesse said that Deion Lewis is on the same level as Le'Veon Bell or Todd Gurley, okay? I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying he play, he play, he has a similar play style to those, okay? And that's one thing the Patriots have needed for quite a while, all right? You had uh, LeGarrette Blunt last year where he did lead the league in touchdowns, but most of those touchdowns came from the goal line. Okay, they haven't had a running back like Deion Lewis in quite some time. Let me think of when was the last great running back the Patriots had. Didn't they have Corey Dillon for a little bit? And Corey Dillon hasn't played like that was like 2004, 2003 type. Who else? They they is that really? Yeah, the Patriots really. Unless I'm just drawing a blank, they really just haven't had that one solid running back. And that's the thing with the pages. The thing that surprised me most about Deion Lewis, Bill Belichick, as far as his running backs go, he really doesn't, um, like he has like a limit on them. Like he knows that you can't really run running backs into the ground. Otherwise they're going to go bad. It's like fruit. All right. You got to get the most out of it in the beginning because otherwise you leave it out there. It's going to go bad. That's what Bill Belichick does. He treats his running backs like fruit. I can't believe I made that comparison, but we did and we made it work. All right. But Deion Lewis is different. Okay. Like I said, middle of the season, probably after the fourth game, fifth game around there. So I was like after the first quarter of the season, I guess you could say. Deion Lewis started getting the ball a lot more and started becoming the lead back. All right. And you're probably, you were, like I was waiting for Deion Lewis like eventually to lose his time and have some, have like a guy like James Whiting come in and take over. That never happened. Deion Lewis, like I said, continually got better year after year. So that's one of the biggest Patriots strengths right there. Another strength that they had was, I don't know if you could consider this a strength or a like, I don't know. It's weird. Their defense, they give up a lot of yards, but they don't give up points. All right. So I guess you could say their scoring defense was a strength this year. All right. That's one of the biggest reasons why they're here. Obviously, they got that Tom Brady guy, and he's pretty good. And we might talk about Tom Brady on Friday or whatever. But I want to I'm gonna go against the grain. I don't want to be like everyone else and just talk about Tom Brady. All right. I want to give some analysis. All right. So like I said, you got Tom Brady, or you got the defense. They don't give up many points. You're going to get a bunch of yards, but you are going to have trouble getting into that end zone. That's one of the biggest like biggest reasons why they ended up finishing 13-3. and three. Let me see right here. Let me go through their last... Let's go last... 1, 2, 3, 4... 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, last seven games against the Jets. Only gave up 16 points. Against the Bills, only gave up 16. Uh, against the Steelers, they gave up 24, but that's pretty good against a team with a Hall of Fame running back, wide receiver, and... Uh, quarterback against the Dolphins. That's the game they. That's the game they lost while they were on their streak. All right, they gave up 27 to Miami. Not a good game against the Bills. They gave up three against Miami the week before that. They gave up uh, 17, and then against the Raiders they gave up eight. I mean, we could keep going. Against the Broncos gave up 16. Against the Chargers 13. Against the Falcons seven. Jets 17. Buccaneers 14. All right, and then we're back at the first quarter of the season after that. So the defense really hasn't gave up too many points this season. So they've been playing well. All right, so that's the two, one of the two biggest strengths that jumped out to me for this team. Now let's talk about the, should we talk about the Jags next? I think we should talk about the Jags next. It's only fair, all right? So why are they here? They're here because they have the best defense in the league. All right, that's why. That's their biggest strength right there. Also, the fact that they have a rookie running back, and he's one of the better running backs in the league. All right, Leonard Fournette, last week against the Steelers, played extremely well. Came out of the game injured for a few, uh, for about, what, 15 minutes, I guess you could say. I mean, he got injured towards the end of the second half and came back in the third quarter. So, Or towards the end of the first half, came back in the third quarter. So it really wasn't much time that he missed. All right, he finished the season with 1,040 yards, had 268 carries and 9 touchdowns. Mind you, 
he missed, I think, two games, I believe, this season and was injured in a couple of them. So he didn't really have a full season. Okay, so he could have did a whole lot better if he had a full 16 games and played every game completely. All right, so running back, one of their biggest strengths. Uh, let's look at their season so far, all right? So they beat te the Texans week one. Then they lost to the Titans, gave up a lot of points, that one, 37. Then they beat down on the Ravens, 44-7. Lost to the Jets, beat down on the Steelers, 30-9. Lost to the Rams, beat the Colts, beat the Bengals, beat the Chargers, beat the Browns. Lost to the Cardinals, beat the Colts, beat the Seahawks. The Seahawks game was probably the most defining game for the Jags so far this season, all right? That was the game right there, if you remember heading into it, where, like, you know, are the Jags for real? Or are they, like, really a good team in the um, in the AFC? And that game was what, what it came down to, whether or not they were pretenders or contenders, and they won that game. And obviously, that's what made, them, made us think they were contenders. And obviously, it's true. They're here in the AFC Championship, all right? So, yeah, I'm not going to talk about their defense because we're going to talk more about that on uh, Friday, all right? So, like I said, one of their biggest strengths so far this season obviously has been their defense, but that's the obvious. It's like the Tom Brady factor. I'm not going to name the defense because it's too obvious, all right? So, I went with uh, the running back, Lennon Fournette, as one of their biggest strengths. I mean, Blake Bortles, he's Blake Bortles, you know? All right, now let's talk about the Eagles. Why are they here? All right, they finished the season, what was it, 14-2, and two, I believe? 13-3, and three, all right? Beat the Redskins week one, then lost to the Chiefs. Then they went on a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten game winning streak, I believe. Lost to the Seahawks. That game was pretty scary right there because you know what? The um, the Eagles really hadn't beat a great team up to that point. And then they face off a team with, uh, face off with a team like the Seahawks in Seattle, and they lose twenty four to ten. All right. So after that, I remember that. I remember that week. I was talking about. You know what? I still believe in the Eagles. They got to beat the Rams next week. Sure enough, they did. They beat them forty-three thirty-five. But that's when bad news happened. That's when Carson Wentz blew out his knee. All right. And after that, it was like Philly's done. Okay. But you know what? Nick Foles comes in. Beats the Giants the next week, puts up 34 points on them. Then against the Raiders, doesn't play well, but they still pull out the win, 19-10. Lost to the Cowboys week 17, but, I mean, that was 6-0. Winning Foles didn't really play much in that game, I don't think, so, I mean, it didn't really matter. So, now, they beat the Falcons 15-10. Now, they get the Vikings on Sunday, and we're going to talk about the Vikings right after this. But what's Philly's biggest strength? Their biggest strength is their coaching staff. Talked about it yesterday. They have the best coaching staff in the league. All right, I'm going to talk about it again today. All right, the fact that they knew what they needed to do uh, game plan for to get Nick Foles going was huge. All right, having him throw those underneath routes and screens helped him big time. All right, you can't have Nick Foles out here um, throwing deep routes or anything like that because you're not going to win that way. All right, the fact that the defense knew how to game plan for a guy like Julio Jones, okay? I mean, Julio Jones did play well, but at the end of the game, they limited him on that last drive where Julio Jones couldn't get a catch in the end zone. All right, they stopped Devontae Freeman, they limited Mohamed Sanu, and they limited. Matt Ryan, right? That's all game planning right there. So Philly's coaching staff right now is probably the, ooh, the second best. When I say, I messed up. I said Philly's coaching staff is the best in the league. I forgot that the Patriots are still a team. So you know what? Philly's got the second best coaching staff. But, I mean, of course the Patriots are a head and shoulders ahead of everyone. So, I mean, from the from like rest of the normal teams, Philly's got the best. All right, let's say that. All right, so their coaching staff is one of the biggest reasons why they made it to the NFC Championship game and why they've made it this far. So now let's talk about the final team. Let's talk about the Minnesota Vikings. Did any of us think they'd end up here in the beginning of the season? I doubt it, honestly. All right, Sam Bradford was their quarterback. I don't think anyone thought that Case Keenum was going to take them to the NFC Championship. All right, they started off the season beating the Saints, lost to the Steelers, beat the Bucks, then lost to the Lions. Then they won another big winning streak right here. That's one thing, too. Each team besides the Jags has gone on a huge winning streak during the season. They pulled off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight wins in a row. Lost to the Panthers, then finished off the season with three more wins in a row. All right. Case Keenum has been probably one of their biggest, obviously one of their biggest strengths this season. Him and Pat Shermer are like a package deal right there, okay? Case Keenum really hasn't played well so far in his NFL career before this um, season, all right? Played with the Texans, really didn't do much there. Got some time with the Rams, started it for them for a bit, didn't do much there, really didn't play well at all, okay? Case Keenum playing this well this season came out of the blue, okay? Threw for over 3,500 yards and had 22 touchdowns, I believe only threw seven interceptions, okay? 
this is honestly kind of crazy, the fact that Case Keenum has played this well this season. All right, he's got this team playing in the NFC Championship game. Obviously, there's other factors, and we're going to talk about those later on. I mean, on Friday and all that, because obviously we're going to talk segment three. We're going to talk about weaknesses, okay? But Case Keenum has been probably the biggest, one of the biggest strengths for the Vikings this season. All right, you pretty much, obviously, I'm going to talk about why it's not the case anymore. But this season, Case Keenum has been good enough to where the defense can do their job and Case Keenum just needs to put up, what, 20 points a game, and then they'll be fine. So Case Keenum has been a huge strength for the Vikings this season and probably the biggest reason why they've made it this far. So that's it for the strengths I'm going to highlight. I'm going to be kind of mean in the third segment, talk about each team's weaknesses, okay? So that's actually going to wrap it up for this segment. But next up, next segment, we're going to be talking about why the era of the QB is going down, okay? So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Football Podcast. It's not a bit of a slip up right there saying football. But yeah, this is the GSMC Football Podcast. And in that last segment, we talked about each of the four playoff team strengths. For this segment, we're going to talk about the why the era of the QB is going down. And why. And then in the next segment, we're going to talk about each of the four playoff team's weaknesses. All right, so we got to split it up a bit, you know. But let's talk quarterbacks. Let's talk... Let's talk about the four quarterbacks currently in the NA and the uh, NFL championship games going on this weekend. All right, let's talk about how it's Tom Brady, Blake Bortles, Case Keenum, and Nick Foles. All right. Obviously, one of these is not like the other. Obviously, Tom Brady is the outlier in this out of these four quarterbacks. Okay. Obviously, Tom Brady is one of the better quarterbacks of all time. Okay, but what about the other three? Blake Bortles, what do we think of him? We've never really thought highly of Blake Bortles, okay? We always thought that he was more of a, uh, more of like a bust type, okay? Not exactly a bust, but wasn't worth exactly a first round pick. Hasn't played well, really. Played all right this season. There was one year where he did well, but it was more garbage time stats because Jacksonville was always down. All right, so Blake Bortles really, we never really thought of him to be a good quarterback by any means. Okay, what have we thought of Case Keenum in his career? Mm, probably going to be a journeyman backup quarterback. All right, not really much, not really much there. Was a great quarterback at the University of Houston, but in the NFL, just really didn't do much with the Rams, didn't do anything with the Texans. But now he's been playing well. But would you consider Case Keenum a top tier quarterback in this league? I don't think so. I wouldn't. Yeah, he threw for over 3,500 yards and had 22 touchdowns, but is that enough for us to make him make uh, make a in order for us to think that the guy is a uh, top five quarterback, let alone top ten? Probably not. How about Nick Foles? Yeah, he didn't lead his team the entire season, but he did come in with about um, three games left to play. All right, and he did have to play in a playoff game against the Super Bowl runner-ups last year okay do we think Nick Foles is a great quarterback by any means uh no we don't all right he did have one great year with the um with the Eagles where he threw like 27 touchdowns two interceptions I think it was and then he got traded to the Rams Rams paid him I believe Nick Foles never worked out there 
Could have to do with the fact that Jeff Fisher was the coach, but I'm not even going to go there. All right. So, I mean, out of besides Tom Brady, these three quarterbacks remaining, we never really thought highly of them, and we still don't. All right. No one's going to tell tell you that Blake Bortles is a top ten quarterback, let alone top fifteen. No one's going to tell you Case Keenum's a top ten quarterback. Probably not even tell you he's a top fifteen because it's the only t- this is the only year he's ever done anything in his career. And as far as Nick Foles goes, he's going to go back to being a backup next year. Okay. So let's talk about the finishing era of quarterbacks. Meaning, let's talk about the Tom Brady's that era of quarterbacks. Tom Brady, how many years does he have left? He says he's going to play till he's forty five. He's currently forty years old, I believe. You think he's going to last till he's forty five? Um, no, I don't think so. I think he's in the last three, he's probably 30, 43. Tom Brady, I think, um, his passing yards, that's been near the top, but his touchdowns have gone down and he's been prone to throwing more interceptions. He's not like bad or anything like that, but his numbers are starting to take a dip. Okay. Let's talk about, let's talk about, um, Ben Roethlisberger. Okay. What does he have left? Two more years. I mean, how, how much can you trust a quarterback year after year when he's entertaining these retirement questions year after year, okay? The guy's going to be gone. I give him three years at the most, all right? After that, I think he'll be done. I'm not sure how much he wants to keep playing, all right? One of the better quarterbacks for sure, Hall of Famer, won two Super Bowls, all right? And I hope you're starting to get realize the point I'm getting to, okay? Tom Brady, one of the better quarterbacks of all time. I'll take Marino and Manning over him. Go ahead, fight me over it, Okay? As far as like as far as that argument, let me just take a, let me take a dip into that argument, okay? Payne Manning, without a doubt, is a better quarterback than Payne Manning. Look at the talent. It's all about talent. Okay? I get that Brady has what, six Super Bowls, five Super Bowls? No, the New England Patriots have six or five Super Bowls. You think if Bill Belichick wasn't the coach, Tom Brady would be this good? The kid who got picked sixth round. Alright? Everyone likes to say, Oh yeah, Tom Brady everyone acts like with Tom Brady being picked in the sixth round that He was already a great quarterback. No, Bill Belichick developed him. Tom Brady wasn't this quarterback, okay, when he was drafted. Tom Brady was developed, all right, to um, draw the bridge to soccer. Let's talk about Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo, all right? Cristiano Ronaldo wasn't already this great player, all right? And I'm sorry for those football, those um, fans want to listen to football, but this, is, this means this this makes sense, okay? Cristiano Ronaldo, one of the best players in the league, in the world, okay, as far as soccer goes, he developed into it. Lionel Messi, one of the best, probably the best. He was born with that talent. He was already gifted, okay? That's Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning, we already knew what he was gonna be, all right? Peyton Manning has way more talent than Tom Brady did. I'll tell you that much. Peyton Manning didn't have Bill Belichick, okay? Tom Brady was developed into this great quarterback. And I'm not saying Tom Brady's bad. I say he's the third best quarterback ever. Okay? Dan Marino, he never had a defense. He never had a running game. This dude could put up 40, but the team's going to give up 45. That's why he never won a Super Bowl. All right? I know there was that Super Bowl against the 49ers where they, Miami got blown out. I think Miami will put up like 17 points. Uh, San Francisco put up near 40, probably more than that. Marino puts up 35. He still lost. It don't matter. All right? Marino never won a Super Bowl because he never had a solid team around him. He made everyone around him better, okay? Tom Brady does not have the talent that Dan Marino or Payne Manning had, all right? Those are just the facts, okay? People get so caught up in the rings, but it's the truth, all right? But now let's get back to the era of quarterbacks now, now that I talked about that. I probably should have saved that for the fourth segment, actually. That would have been a good one, but here we are, all right? So Ben Roethlisberger, like I said, one of the best quarterbacks probably the best quarterback in Steelers history. I don't know how Steelers fans feel about Terry Bradshaw, but I feel like when people talk about Terry Bradshaw, they talk about the team that he had around him. He had that uh, solid defense and Franco Harris and guys like that, I think. I don't know. That was before my time. All right. So now let's talk about Drew Brees. Probably got two more years at the most. His play is starting to take a dip. Okay. Eventually, he's going to be done. He's not the quarterback he once was, but he can still get it done. All right. So he's got two more years. Then we got, who else do we got? Phillip Rivers. He's part of that era. All right. Was a great quarterback. Never could get it done, but nonetheless was a great quarterback. Okay. So we got Phillip Rivers, Ben Roethlisberger, Drew Brees, Tom Brady. I feel like we're missing one. We're missing an older quarterback. Are we? Let's go through division through division. No one in the AFC East. AFC North, no. AFC South, 
No. AFC West. No, just as Philip Rivers. NFC West. No. I mean, Carson Palmer, yeah. Carson Palmer was a great quarterback, but he's retired now, so he's gone. He's part of that era. He's gone. NFC South, no, they're all besides Drew Brees. Okay. Uh, NFC North, mm, no. I mean, Aaron Rodgers still in his prime. Okay, now NFC East, no. So those are the quarterbacks right there. Phillip Rivers, Tom Brady, Carson Palmer, who's retired now, Ben Roethlisberger, and Drew Brees. Five quarterbacks from the past era, the 2000s era, okay? They're all about to retire soon. Probably Tom Brady probably has is going to last the longest, but I mean he's got more, no more than three years. I feel probably four years if I'm being generous. It's like the Sandlot, right? Eventually he's going to be the last, but he's going to be gone. Okay, so that era of quarterbacks are gone. What about the next era? All right, obviously we got Aaron Rodgers, the best quarterback without a doubt in the league, the most talented. Might end up being one of the best ever if he wins a couple of more Super Bowls. Okay. We got Aaron Rodgers. Who do we have after that? Okay. In the AFC East, Miami hasn't had a quarterback since Dan Marino left. The Jets haven't had a quarterback since Chad Pennington, but even he he wasn't one of those great ones. He was just a serviceable guy. Buffalo Bills haven't had a great quarterback since, what is it, Jim Kelly, I think? All right. How about the AFC North? Joe Flacco? No. Andy Dalton? Eh, serviceable. Cleveland hasn't had a quarterback since I've been alive. Like I said, Pittsburgh, they're losing Big Ben. Houston, Deshaun Watson maybe could be, but he's a rookie, so we don't know. Andrew Luck could be on that uh, same level as Rodgers, but can't stay healthy, so we don't know yet. Blake Bortles, definitely not. Marcus Mariota, serviceable. Denver, doesn't have a quarterback. Kansas City, Alex Smith, eh, he's leaving. Not really an all-timer or great quarterback. He's not really a great quarterback, top five or anything like that. All right, Patrick Mahomes, going to be in his first year or just second year next year, but we don't know what we got with him. Like I said, Phillip Rivers is going to be retiring next few years probably. Derek Carr, eh, serviceable. Pretty good. How about Dak Prescott, game manager? Not good when Ezekiel Elliott's not out there. Oh, yeah, Eli Manning. That's He's part of that era. As much as you don't like Eli Manning, I know a lot of people don't. He's part of that era, and he's a Hall of Fame quarterback. I forgot about him. He's going to be retiring soon. Two more years at the most, just like the rest. All right, Philly might have something with Carson Wentz, but... Had his first great year this year towards ACL. Not sure how he's going to be next year. Kirk Cousins with Washington. Uh, yeah, not okay. He's all right. Chicago Bears don't have a quarterback. Matt Stafford hasn't been able to get to the playoffs. Top five quarterback, though, but just hasn't been able to get to the playoffs. So, I mean, he's not on the level as a Roethlisberger or Brady or Breeze. Do you get what I'm getting at right now? Do you guys understand that? I'm talking about Hall of Fame quarterbacks. What Hall of Fame quarterbacks besides Aaron Rodgers do we um, have coming up? We're not even sure. All right, Minnesota, mm, don't have a quarterback, really. Case Keenum, he's all right, serviceable. Matt Ryan, not on the level. Tom Brady, Ben Roethlisberger, Drew Brees. Uh, I guess you could say he's a Phillip Rivers type, but hasn't been on the same level as uh, the Breezes, the Bradys, the Roethlisbergers. All right, he's not that kind of quarterback. He's a good one in the league. Is he a Hall of Famer so far? Probably not. Cam Newton is going to be remembered as a great quarterback, but he's not a Hall of Famer. Like I said, Dorland Saints are going to be losing Drew Brees. Tampa Bay, Jameis Winston, we don't know what we got with him. He's a good quarterback, but that's it. All right, and as for the NFC West, Russell Wilson, mm, he might be, might be, might be one of those Hall of Fame types, but we don't know yet. 49ers might have some in Jimmy G. Jared Goff, good quarterback, but I don't think he's going to be, ever be on the same level as Roethlisberger, Brady, Drew Brees, Rivers. All right, we're losing about... Five Hall of Fame quarterbacks. Carson Palmer is the outlier there with the six, okay? Eli Manning, Rivers. I think Phillip Rivers is a Hall of Famer, by the way. All right. Tom Brady. All right. Let me restart. Rivers, Brady, Manning, Roethlisberger, and Breeze. Five Hall of Fame quarterbacks from the past era. They're going to be retiring. Carson Palmer is that sixth quarterback from that era, but don't think he's a Hall of Famer. Okay. So what do we have left? We got an unproven quarterback in Carson Wentz. Derek Carr, not sure what he's going to do next year. Andrew Luck can't stay healthy. Aaron Rodgers is the only surefire Hall of Fame quarterback in the league after those guys retire. Okay. This QB draft, this upcoming draft with the QBs, we're going to talk more about it in the fourth segment because I want to talk about pretty much teams are going to be drafting quarterbacks and talk about where they're going to go. But, I mean, 
There's no all-timers there. There's no Andrew Lux, no Aaron Rodgers, all right, in that draft. At least we don't we don't know that yet. But, I mean, anyone else, mm, they're good, but they don't play like Hall of Famers. They're not that level yet, all right? The league has been taken over by Brady, Breeze, Roethlisberger, Rodgers, I guess you could say. He's probably a little after that era, okay? Those guys... I mean, no one's really stepped up against them, ever. These quarterbacks are all right. They're good. Some of them are great. But the only one, like I said, Rodgers, I mean, he's the only top-tier quarterback in the league. Matt Ryan's not on Roger, in Rodgers' uh, league. Matt Ryan can't compete with Aaron Rodgers. No one in this league can compete with Aaron Rodgers. There's no one on that level anymore. So now the era of the QB, I think, is starting to go down, and it might die. Okay? Because now back to the teams in the championship games, Jacksonville, Minnesota, um, Philly, they're showing that you don't need a top tier quarterback to get you this far. Okay, obviously Carson Wentz is a good quarterback in the league, but he's not top tier yet. He could have won MVP, but he's still young. We don't know yet. He's not Aaron Rodgers level by far at all. All right. So now going forward, the whole you need a quarterback to win, quarterback to succeed, that's not going to be the case anymore. I'm telling you that right now. Teams are going to start looking at Jacksonville. Teams are going to start looking at Minnesota and thinking, you know what? Let's build the defense. All right, let's have a top defense in the league. Okay, let's start building up our running backs and start building up our good receiving core so that way when we bring in a quarterback, we don't have to worry about him leading our team and being the best guy. Okay, you can't tell me that a guy like Cam Newton would be as good as he is if he didn't have the team surrounding him. All right, how good would Carson Wentz be if he didn't have a top defense? And a nice running game. Carson Wentz, I think, is that next quarterback who's going to take the next what level, actually. So I got to be cool on him, but we got to wait for him to take that next level. All right. But like I'm saying, there's no quarterbacks. Andrew Luck is the only one that could come close to Aaron Rodgers, but the guy can't stay healthy. So we don't know what's going forward. The air of the, 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 air of the top QB is going down. It's dying. All right. Get ready for Smash Mouth football. Defense running the ball because that's what's going to happen. And I hope you're prepared for it because I am. I love that kind of football. I'd rather see that than, I guess you could say, quarterbacks throwing all over the place, all right? I enjoy that football better. But like I said, this segment was just to show you that we really don't have any quarterbacks like Brady, Breeze, uh, Roethlisberger coming up besides Rodgers. And Rodgers currently in his prime. What after? What about after him? There's no one. No one on his level at all. All right? Russell Wilson, he's good. He's won a Super Bowl. But you can't tell me he's on Aaron Rodgers' level because he's not. All right, so that's all I had to say about that. Next up, we're going to be talking about the teams in the playoffs, their weaknesses. We use this segment as a little little bridge, little breakup. But like I said, we're going to talk about the team's weaknesses next up. And then for that fourth segment, we're going to be talking about um, talking about probably the we're going to talk about the divisions, which ones were the best, which ones were the worst, and we're going to talk about how many quarterbacks can go in the first round of the draft. All right, so stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. SMCpodcast.com for more info. SMC football podcast. That last segment was actually a bit of a fun one. We talked about how the era of the QB is going down. All right, because you can't tell me after Breeze, Brady, Rivers, Roethlisberger, Manning, Eli Manning, obviously, 
And I guess you could throw Carson Palmer in there. I mean, I don't want to throw Carson Palmer in there. That's going to weaken my argument. All right, but those quarterbacks right there, those are all Hall of Famers. Phillip Rivers, you might argue about. I could see it, but I think he's a Hall of Famer. All right. After that, besides Aaron Rodgers, who do we have? We don't. We have a bunch of up-and-coming guys. We don't know who can end up. They can end up being a bunch of Matt Ryans. But I don't think we have many Aaron Rodgers. And Falcons fans, I'll tell you this much. Aaron, Matt Ryan, he's a great quarterback. He's good. He'll never touch Aaron Rodgers' level ever in his life. I'll tell you that much right now. All right. We got guys like Russell Wilson who probably hit their peak. We know what they are. Rod, R- Wilson's not on Rodgers' level by any means. doesn't come close to him. No one does. No one has the talent that Aaron Rodgers does. Carson Wentz could be that next guy. Could be, but we're not sure. Guy blew out his knee. Still going to be getting, he's going to be in his third year next year. We're not sure how well he's going to be coming off of a major knee injury. All right. So, like I said, don't get mad, but your team's quarterbacks aren't as good as you think they are. I mean, they could be good, but they're not Hall of Fame good and they're not Rodgers talented good. All right. So get prepared for defenses to get better and for running backs to get drafted more. All right. The running back position is going to make a comeback and defenses are going to start getting a whole lot better in order to help these quarterbacks who are all right, but will never be as talented as the guys as this past era that's going to be retiring in a couple of years. So now we're going to be talking about weaknesses. We're going to be talking about each team in the playoff. We talked about their strengths. Now we're going to talk about their weaknesses. So let's just go back in order. Let's start off with the New England Patriots. Weakness. I know that they did have eight sacks against the Titans. All right. And I know that that looks good. But... Tyne's offensive line isn't anything to write home about, okay? Believe it or not, the Patriots still have a weak defensive line. That's their weakness right now. Their biggest one, I guess you could say, is their defensive line. Jacksonville has a solid offensive line. I don't see New England getting to uh, Blake Bortles eight times, let alone even three times, I guess you could say. All right, I don't see that happening. I don't see them putting pressure on, Bre- on Blake, Okay. They really need to figure out a way to get to the quarterback because if you give Blake Bortles time, I mean, he's not going to kill you or anything like that. All right. He's not going to beat you with his arm. But a quarterback with no pressure on him is a quarterback who's prone to making less mistakes. All right. You want Blake Bortles? You want a chance to beat the Jacksonville? All right. It starts with putting pressure on Blake Bortles and forcing him to make mistakes. If you can't put pressure on him, then he's going to be average or above average like he was against Pittsburgh. Okay. So they really need to figure that out. If not, they need to figure out a game plan, I'm meaning. If not, then they're going to struggle, obviously, with a defensive line. Okay? That's one of their weaknesses right there. Do they have a di- another weakness? I mean, I guess you could say the receiving core, but that all comes down to Tom Brady. I mean, Danny Amendola really hasn't done much all season, but then, boom, he comes out with, like, it was like, what, 11 receptions, had over 100 yards, I think, something around there. All right? Brandon Cooks really has underwhelmed all season. Chris Hogan, he's just, Slot guy, but he's not great or anything like that. He's barely good. I guess he's average. All right. So, I mean, the receiving core, I guess, is the other weakness on that team. And they're going to struggle. That receiving core is going to struggle against Jacksonville. I'll tell you that much right now. Okay. They're going to struggle and it's going to be difficult for them. So, right now, I guess the two biggest weaknesses on um, New England is their defensive line and the receiving core. All right. Now, Jacksonville, what's their biggest weakness? One of their biggest weaknesses It's quarterback. All right. They're one of their biggest, biggest weaknesses is quarterback. You never know which Blake Bortles you're going to get. You never know if you're going to get the guy who played well in the fourth quarter against Pittsburgh, or you never, you never know if you're going to get the guy who played poorly against Buffalo. That's the thing right there. This team struggles, obviously. Well, they don't struggle. All right. They don't give up points, but when Blake Bortles doesn't play well, it's pretty much Jacksonville's defense and running back are playing against Blake Bortles, trying to win in spite of them. All right, so Blake Bortles is their biggest weakness. Blake Bortles needs to be average. All right, in order for this team to have a solid chance to win, and I'm saying solid is like they're gonna win, like most likely win. Blake Bortles is average. Jacksonville has all the chances in the world to win. Okay, but that's the weakness right there. You never know if he's gonna be at least average. All right, he's a weakness. I guess you could say that receiving core is a weakness, but that might just be a product of Blake Bortles. All right. I mean, Alan Hearns, he really hasn't been much since that one year. We had 15 touchdowns, I think it was. Uh, Keenan Cole, he's young. D.D. Westbrook is young. 
they had Allen Robinson, I mean, they'd be a whole lot better. But he obviously got injured week one, I believe it was, right before, like right at the end of training. Can't remember exactly. But yeah, I guess, I mean, Jacksonville's only true weakness is Blake Bortles. If they had a guy like Case Keenum who could go out and play well, like above average and just play well week in and week out, Jacksonville would, they'd be my solid pick to win the Super Bowl. All right. They just, that's what they're missing right now is quarterback. If they had a solid, decent quarterback, they'd be Super Bowl contenders year in and year out after this. But now after this year, I mean, I'm sure they realize that, you know what, we can't keep going this far with Blake Bortles. All right. His defense isn't always going to be shutting people out and isn't always going to be locking everyone down. We need someone who could help us instead of bring us down and we have to win in spite of the guy. All right, so Blake Bortles is Jacksonville's biggest weakness. But other than that, I mean, they're probably one of the better all-around teams in the, in the uh, championship games. Philly, what's their biggest weakness right now? It's got to be same with thing as, uh, same thing as Jacksonville, Nick Foles. And that's not trying to say anything bad about Nick Foles. All right, Nick Foles played well. Okay, he played well against Atlanta. But, I mean, if he has a bad game, Philly has no shot. Okay, their defense played well. Running game was okay. I mean, that's a, that's not really a weakness. This is something they haven't been able to get going. I guess you could say. Like, I wouldn't consider JJ and Legarrette Blount weaknesses. Okay, receiving core: Zach Ertz, Alshon Jeffrey played well all season. Alshon Jeffrey got rewarded for it with a four-year contract. This team, if Nick Foles doesn't play well, this team can't put up points. So be it. Like that. Jacksonville could still put up points because they still got Leonard Fournette. The guy scored three touchdowns. Philly doesn't have a Leonard Fournette, so you need um, you need Nick Foles to play above average. You need him to be serviceable. All right, so that's where it is right there for Philly. Nick Foles is their biggest weakness, but like he's not a weakness like Blake Bortles. He's not as bad as Blake Bortles. But if Nick Foles doesn't play well, then Philly really doesn't have much of a shot. All right, and Nick Foles doesn't know, need to go throwing the ball deep or anything like that. He just needs to complete his passes, get yards. Doesn't need 10 yards uh, pass or anything like that, but he needs to be successful. And if he's not, then Philly really struggles. All right. And as for Minnesota, what is their biggest weakness? I'm going to go with the running back position. Oof. Yeah, the running back position, I guess you could say. And the running back position hasn't been bad. All right. Most might say it's Case Keenum, but he's played well all season. It's time for us to wake up and realize, you know what, Case Keenum, obviously we're not sure about next year, but this year Case Keenum is a good quarterback. Okay, he's been playing well. He did throw an interception last week, but it didn't hurt him. They won. Brought him, helped him score that game when touching at the end. I mean, that had more to do with Stephon Diggs than it did with Case Keenum, but nonetheless, he's been playing well. So I think you guess you could say that their running game is their biggest weakness. You don't have a 100-yard rusher on that team at all. Latavius Murray, he can he can be productive, same with Jarek McKinnon, but they're not going to get you 100 yards. They're not going to get you a bunch of touchdowns like a guy like Dalvin Cook could have. Dalvin Cook was the answer to their running back problem. All right, He was the answer to the running back position after they got rid of Adrian Peterson. That was the guy. Dalvin Cook was playing lights out, playing amazing, cutting, hitting the holes nice, All right, good vision, and then he tore his ACL. Okay. Now you got Jack McKinnon, Latavius Murray. They're serviceable. Like I said, they're not going to get you 100 yards, but you stop the running game from them, you got to force Case Keenum to try and do it on his own to win, and that's going to make you struggle. So right now, if I had to pick a weakness for Minnesota, it's not Case Keenum. It's that running game. All right, you need them to pay, do their part, but sometimes they won't. Sometimes they will. They've been, like I said, they've been productive for most of the season, but you're not going to get a hundred yards out of them. So I think that's the biggest weakness out of Minnesota. So like I said, New England's biggest weakness right now: defensive line, probably the receiving court too. But I mean, that gets fixed up by Tom Brady. Jacksonville's is Blake Bortles, Phillies is Nick Foles, and then Minnesota's that's um that's their running game. That's their running backs. All right, but they've been pretty good. They've been all right. They haven't been great. So next segment, we're going to be talking about, that's actually going to wrap it up for the segment, excuse me. Next up, we're going to be talking about the divisions in, in the NFL. Talk about, probably rank them as far as NFC and AFC goes. Talk about each teams in them 
why why one division is the best, why one is not as good, and why one is the worst, you know? And then we'll talk about the draft. How many quarterbacks could we realistically see going in the draft in the first round? All right, so we'll do that. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. football podcast in that last segment we did the opposite of the first we talked about the teams uh, the playoff teams weaknesses the current last four playoff teams weaknesses and how that could affect them so we talked about those and for this segment we're going to be talking about the divisions this year in football which one of them were the best which of them were the worst and we're going to rank them we're going to give a little analysis about them too maybe talk about how well they how how, um, how different they could be next year and we're going to talk about the draft, quarterbacks specifically. How many quarterbacks can go in the first round? All right, so which one do I... Let's start off with the divisions, all right? Let's start off with the NFC East. What did we think of the NFC East this year? Dallas Cowboys, disappointing. New York Giants, disappointing. Philly, best team in that division. Washington, average team, below average team. So as far as, like, we're just basing it off of this year, too. So as far as the NFC, go, NFC East goes, we'll rank them last right now, all right? Let's go NFC South. Atlanta Falcons, playoff team. Carolina Panthers, playoff team. New Orleans Saints, playoff team. Tampa Bay Bucks, disappointing. You got the Falcons. I mean, their offense was it was what it was this season. Very underwhelming. And you know how I feel about that. Carolina, they're a team who, I mean, it was either them or New Orleans. Carolina put up a good fight, but they need to fix up that secondary. But nonetheless, they were an 11-5 team this season. All right, so they were good. New Orleans, very good team. Finished 11-5, won the division. But like I said, very good team. Solid running attack and had a solid young defense. Plus, you got Drew Brees. Like I said, Tampa Bay, Jameis Winston, team that was thought to make the playoffs this year. Um, but um, as far as the beginning of the season went, but just never really put it all together. All right, so I'll put them as the number one division right now. And they're probably going to stay there in the NFC. Honestly, you put three playoff teams in the in the play. You put you have three playoff teams from your division. You're probably the best division in the league. All right. So the NFC West. What do we think of them? Arizona Cardinals finished off eight and eight, but we're just an average team. Rams, the best team in the in the division. Okay, played well. Did get bounced in the, in the wild card round, but they were a really young team. San Francisco. Yeah, they have Jimmy Garoppolo, but in reality. They finished six and ten. Seattle missed out on the playoffs. Just really disappointing this year. One of the most disappointing teams this season for them to miss out on the playoffs. They got a bunch of stuff to figure out in the offseason. So right now I'll put them at second, I guess you could say. So right now we got NFC South at one, NFC West at two, and then I'm gonna keep the NFC West at number four. So let's see. Could the NFC North jump the NFC West? You get the Chicago Bears, young team, finished five and eleven, but they're just not ready yet. Next season they're going to be a good team, but as of right now, as of this season, they just weren't ready. Green Bay probably would have been playing in the NFC Championship if Aaron Rodgers doesn't break his collarbone. They ended up finishing nine and seven, I believe. All right, so like I said, if not for Aaron Rodgers getting hurt, we're probably watching him play on Sunday. Detroit finished nine and seven. Once again, just barely missed out on the playoffs. Fire Jim Caldwell. Need a higher coach. Probably going to be Matt Patricia. I think he might be able to get him back. Get him to the playoffs, not get him back because they haven't been there. In, I can't remember the last time they were in the playoffs. Then you get the Minnesota Vikings playing this Sunday. All right. 
the best team in the division. I mean, obviously, it's the Green Bay Packers with Aaron Rodgers healthy, but he wasn't this season. So, Minnesota currently playing this Sunday. That has some weight to it. I'm going to put NFC South at number one. Then you got the NFC North at number two, the NFC West at number three, and the NFC East at number four. Okay. Next season, if I had to do my way too early rankings, it'll probably be probably be the NFC North at number one, or the NFC no, yeah, the NFC North at number one, and then the NFC South at number, ooh, the NFC West at number two, NFC South at number three, and the NFC, no, no, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be. Ugh. NFC North at number one, NFC South at number two, NFC West at number three, but that could change given how the offseason goes for those teams. All right, that might end up being the second best division in the league next year. And the NFC West, once again, at number or NFC East at number four. Washington's going to be bad. Not sure how New York's going to end up. Dallas, we got to see what they do next season. They got to fix up that defense, and Philly should be back as the best team in that division. Now, let's head over to the AFC. This season. We'll go, um, let's see, the AFC East. Let's start off with them. Put two teams in the playoffs, Buffalo Bills, New England Patriots. Obviously, New England Patriots the best team in that division. Bills did well. Sean McDermott did well to coach that team. Okay, did well. Miami, really underwhelming, disappointing year from Adam Gates. Did lose Ryan Townsend in training camp, but that offense was brutal for most of the year. Traded Jerry Jai. Offense got better but just really couldn't put it together at all. Showed flashes of a team they could be by beating a team like New England. They did beat a team like Atlanta early on in the season, but just really never put it together. The Jets, they were a competitive team up until Josh McCown got hurt for those last few weeks of the season. All right, so the Jets, I mean, like you said, they're probably a quarterback away from competing maybe for the wild card. All right, so let's see. I'm not going to rank them yet. NFC North, Cincinnati Bengals, underwhelming. Not really ready through nothing right home about. Baltimore missed playoffs, barely. Missed playoffs because Andy Dalton threw that touchdown pass at the end. Cleveland Browns 0-16. Pittsburgh Steelers just got bounced by the Jags in the playoffs, but overall had a good team. Great team. Team that should have been playing this Sunday. All right, AFC South. Houston Texans were looking good, but Deshaun Watson blew out his knee. Indianapolis Colts, probably one of the worst teams in the league. Not trying to take anything away from Jacoby Brissett because he was a serviceable quarterback this year. Also had two teams that made the playoffs, Jacksonville Jaguars and Tennessee Titans. Tennessee probably shouldn't have made it, but nonetheless they did. Jacksonville deserved to be in there. Then you had the AFC West. Denver? Eh. They were all right. No, they were. They were bad, actually. I'm forgetting. They were bad. Think about Kansas City. They made the playoffs. Did what they always do. Blew a big lead. Underwhelmed when it mattered. Chargers? Started off slow, 1-4, and four, I believe it was. Almost made the playoffs. Bills lose, Chargers are in. All right, let's see. The Raiders, most disappointing team in the league this season, by far. There was talk about them being a team in the offseason, this past offseason, that they should, uh, they're should they going to be an AFC championship type of team. They're going to be a team that might play in the Super Bowl. <laughs> Couldn't have been farther from the truth this season watching them play. All right, so let's rank them. Let's go, obviously... Teams who put out the two playoff teams in each division go first. I'm going to go AFC East as the best division because they got the New England Patriots and Buffalo Bills. New York Jets were the third best team in that division. Miami was probably the fourth, just the worst team in that division. All right. Jets were competitive. Miami was at times. But nonetheless, I mean, you put two playoff teams in there, you're going to be the number one division. AFC South, number two. All right. Houston could have been the uh, third playoff team to get in, but Sean Watson got hurt. There wasn't really much to talk about them after. They were a bad team. Indianapolis Colts, one of the worst teams in the league. Tennessee Titans got limped into the playoffs. Jacksonville, good team, so they're number two. Number three, I'm going to go with the AFC North. Pittsburgh should be playing this Sunday, but they just came up short. All right, Baltimore, uh that's a team that's always competitive. Cincinnati was underwhelming. Then the Browns 0-16. All right, AFC West. Denver, bad team. Like I said, they're fourth. All right, so that's how I have it ranked. AFC East was the number one division this year. AFC South was number two. AFC North, number three. And AFC West, number four. None of these divisions were as good as probably the top three divisions in the NFC, though. I'll tell you that much. All right, so that's how I rank my divisions. Now let's talk the draft. Let's talk quarterbacks. Let's talk... Sam Darnold, Josh Rosen, Baker Mayfield, Josh Allen. 
uh, Lamar Jackson, Mason Rudolph. That should be six quarterbacks that I just named off. Let me see my head. Darnold, Rosen, Allen, Mayfield, Jackson. Oh, seven actually named with Rudolph. All right, so that's seven. Unless I'm just confusing myself. All right, so let me see if I can pull the draft order, and we're going to look. I already know that two quarterbacks are going to go in the top three. That's, exa that's at least what I feel. All right. So let's look at it right here. We got the Cleveland Browns, the number one pick. I think they're going to go Sam Darnold. Again, we're talking teams who, like how many quarterbacks can we see realistically get drafted, all right? So first round, Cleveland picks have the number one pick. I think they're going to go Sam Darnold, okay? Then you got the Giants with the number two pick. I think they're going to go Josh Rosen, okay? Eli Manning, he's, Rosen's going to sit behind... Or Rosen's going to sit behind Manning for two years, and then once Manning retires, that's it. Colts, they're not going to go quarterback. Browns, they're not going to go quarterback twice. All right. And then you got the Broncos with the fifth pick. I don't think they're going quarterback. I think they're going offensive line. I think they're going to end up with Kirk Cousins in free agency. All right. So Broncos, no quarterback. Jets, I see quarterback right there. It's going to be Josh Allen or Baker Mayfield. They got the sixth pick. I'm going to go with, I'm going to say they pick Josh Allen. I'm like, it doesn't really matter who they pick, just that they pick a quarterback. So that's three quarterbacks already in the top six. Tampa Bay, no. Chicago with eighth pick, no. San Francisco doesn't need a quarterback anymore. Oakland does not need a quarterback. Okay, now we're going to the picks to 11 through 20. Who needs a quarterback here? Miami probably should draft a quarterback as insurance for Ryan Tannehill, but I doubt they will. All right. Let's see. Green Bay, or let's see, who's after Miami? The Cincinnati Bengals. They're not going quarterback. I mean, Andy Dalton, that's their guy. Washington, they need a quarterback, but are they going to trade for a guy? I say no. All right, because there's guys like Alex Smith, um, Sam Bradford who are going to be available, Tyrod Taylor, but those guys need to go to solid situations. So I just don't see Washington trading for one of those guys. I think they're just going to restart and finally go with the quarterback, a young one. So they'll probably go, yeah, quarterback right there. That's already four quarterbacks in the top 13. All right. Then we go, let's see, Cardinals, they need a quarterback. I think they're going to end up being a team that trades for one, so I don't think they're going to pick one. All right. Chargers, no. Ravens, no. Seahawks, definitely not. Cowboys, no. Lions, no. Now let's go 21 through 32. Okay, we got four quarterbacks so far. I believe, yeah. We got the Browns, the Giants, the Jets, and the Redskins taking quarterbacks. So that's four. How about 21 through 22? Buffalo, they got picks 21, 22. Do I see them taking a guy like Lamar Jackson? Probably not. Do I see them taking a guy like Mason Rudolph? Maybe. They do need a quarterback, but I think that's where a guy like maybe Sam Bradford or Alex Smith comes in. They got more problems on that offense. Okay, then you got the Rams, no. Panthers, no. Titans, no. Falcons, no. Saints, they're going to take a quarterback. I feel, yeah. I think they're going to take quarterback first round. So let's go right there. Boom. Mason Rudolph or Lamar Jackson. That's five. Okay, then you got the remaining teams in the playoffs. The Jags, the Eagles, the Patriots, and the Vikings. Okay. Jags, are they going to go quarterback in the first round? Probably not. All right. If there's already five quarterbacks that are taken, the sixth one that's left, probably a guy like Lamar Jackson, he'll be there in the second round, I feel. Philly doesn't need a quarterback. New England does need a quarterback, but I think the only quarterback they'll take is going to be Mason Rudolph if it's a first rounder. If not, they're going to wait and take a mid round type of player. Vikings, they're not going to go quarterback. All right. Texans. Don't need a quarterback. They don't have a first-round pick, and the Chiefs don't have a first-round pick. So I think there's going to be five quarterbacks that go in the first round. All right? Maybe six, but I doubt a team is going to take a chance on Lamar Jackson. I think someone should, but I doubt it. So there uh, you have it. I think there's going to be five rookie quarterbacks taken in the first round. That's a whole lot. Possibly six, but I think it's going to be five. All right? But that's actually going to wrap it up for today's show. First up, we talked about the remaining playoff team strengths. Then second segment, we talked about how the era of the QB is dying and how teams are going to start building for defenses and running backs. Third segment, we talked about the third segment, we talked about the remaining teams, uh, remaining playoff teams' weaknesses. And then for this segment, we ranked the divisions from best to worst. 
And then we talked about how many quarterbacks could be taken in the draft this year. All right, so like I said, that's going to wrap it up for this segment. We'll be back on Friday. We'll be making our picks on Friday for the remaining games. We got Jags, Patriots, Vikings, Eagles. Can't wait to talk about it. Once again, this is the GSMC Football Podcast. I'm your host, Jesse Tapia. Like I said, we'll be back Friday, so stay tuned, and we'll talk to you later. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program